What's up, everybody? Welcome to Cat and Beats, and welcome to another episode of What Was That? Um, so this is a series I'm making specifically around my Instagram account, where every single day I'm working in the studio, I'll record something that is a bit odd or really makes a track come together. And uh, this time around, it's not an odd one, but it's something that is really handy. And it's the drum bus from Ableton itself. And um, I'm using it specifically for the boom and frequency knob. Now I'm using it on a song by Christopher Salaba. It was a, it's just a chill track. So make sure if you're into this type of vibe to go over to his uh, account. I put it into the uh, description below so you can have a little listen to his music as well. Chill stuff. Anyway, let's have a listen and I want you to pay attention to the low, low end of the kick drum. Okay, so I'm going to turn that drum bus on and off and then I'll explain to you what this is doing and I'll take you through the whole process of how I control the oomph the kick. So let's have a little listen. <laughs> So some of you probably only noticed a little bit of a volume increase and nothing else. That's completely fine. Let's just solo it to make it a little bit more obvious. So this is without. Now, if your speakers don't go that low, that's completely fine. Uh, let me show you what it's doing. And we're also going to go into this thing. So what we're actually doing is we're adding a frequency at 32.7 hertz. Uh, we're specifically adding that frequency amount to this kick drum because um, the whole song is written in C and uh, the lowest bass note in this whole track is going to be C as well. So what we did was to take the root notes and just kind of give that a little warm belly so you have a warm oomph of a kick and I like warm kicks. Now... What you can do here is you can take the frequency, you can move it around so you have to figure out what your root note is of your song. You move it around and you find this little thing down here. It says C sharp right now. And if I move it down a little bit more, it says C plus. And you can also, for instance, if you have a song in G, you can put it over to G. Now, if you go to the C area, you can see that it says C zero plus. If you double click on it, it goes specifically exactly to the frequency of C, which is awesome. Because then you add that in, just a tiny little bit amount, and then you'll be like, ooh, now my kick feels nice and warm and fat. Now, the cool part about it is that if you think to, to yourself, I don't think I have enough of a boom to my kick drop, what you can do is you can just go boom 100%. Hey, let me put that up. And you can just add that in. So that's pretty cool, the, as in one thing, you're not having any clicking issues, because normally you would have put in a kick drum with a, um, with a side chain, do all these difficult things. So this is cool to add that oomph in there. Now on top of that, uh, you have a, um, I'm going to only add a little bit in there, you have a decay amount, so you can say, I want that oomph to be really be oomph and not go but just a little bit of oomph, oomph, oomph just to fill out the, the track. On top of that, this is where I got most excited, is there's a dry and wet knob. And this is really nice because when you're completely done mixing and mastering and you're thinking to yourself, you know, the low end of this kick drum is just a little bit over the top. You can just say, nah, I'll just move it down a bit and it'll be fine again. So with that, you have so much control. Instead of having like a sub kick layer and a this layer and a that layer and a tick and a that and all these kicks everywhere, just have one with a little drum bus on it, control your boom amount, put it to the frequency amount exactly to your, 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 your track, and then slowly just use this one button, this one dry wet knob to control your low end of your track. Now, um, I, I find that absolutely refreshing and nice to have. Uh, this is a subtle track as well. So like to have that precise control is just brilliant. Um, 
Now, obviously, this is going through a side chained compression, so that the low end is left alone. So remember that if you do use this drum bus and you want to have compression, then watch out with that. Otherwise, you're just taking away your low end again. All right. If you want to know more about internal sidechain filter types, uh, I left a description in the video, like in the description below, I left a little description, a little link, Jesus Christ, a little link there as well. All right, that's that for this uh, episode. I'll see you next week, and I'll also see you Thursday where we're going to continue mixing and mastering with Waves plugins and Satinka. Anyway, I'll just let this play a little bit because it's so nice. <laughs>